Uh, the next question has been submitted by Debbie Barrett Cole. Due to recent leaks in national newspapers and Sky News regarding the review under Gary Newsom and Malcolm Ridgeway, will the council leader, Arush Shah, now call for a full public investigation that is fully needed, uh, not only the victims but the entire borough? And will the council leader now step aside and allow a full examination of all council files that have been <coughs> hidden from authorities and victims? I call on Councillor Shah to respond. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you uh, for this question. The independent review into historic CSE practice in Oldham is still very much underway. The review team are still working with victims and their advocates to understand and include their experiences and testimony, and I await for that report to be finalised. The report will be published for everyone to read, and we will hold a public meeting to offer an opportunity for people to have their say on its findings and ask any questions that they may have. I am aware that some elements of the report's draft findings have already been shared with the media and that those findings were both horrific and shameful and it was abundantly clear that the victims' experiences fell far short of the support victims should expect from public services. For that, Madam Mayor, this council is deeply, deeply sorry. In terms of the sharing of data and files with the review team, I have been assured by both our own internal teams and the review team that we have shared all relevant information data and all files and that we, ho that we hold and that have been asked for. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the next question has been submitted by Gary Tarbuck. I am firstly a father of two children in this town. With the recent further delays to the CSE report being published, I, like many fathers in Oldham, have a deep concern for the safety of my children. Irrespective of when or if the repeatedly delayed CSE report will ever be published, the Council knows the truth of what has taken place. I ask the Leader of Oldham Council to clarify once and for all, did her Labour Party controlled council cover up the grooming and gang rape of our town's children, or is it, to quote your ex-leader, all bare lies? I call on Councillor Shah to respond. Um, the accusation often repeated on social media that there was a cover-up of exploitation by the council is the subject of the ongoing independent, uh, independent review into historic CSE practice. As a result, Madam Mayor, it would be inappropriate for me to comment in advance of that report. But let's not pre pretend. For political gain, I might add that abuse of children and young people is a political issue. Unfortunately, we know this abhorrent and disgusting crime was and unfortunately is still being committed in Oldham. And that it was also being committed when the council was led by a coalition of Conservatives and Lib Dems and when the Lib Dems were in power. Abusers don't choose to abuse children because of the political control of an area, Madam Mayor. They do so because they are evil and disgraceful. Regardless of any political affiliation, we should all be working together across this chamber both to support the work of the ongoing independent review in its efforts to seek the truth and justice for victims and to restore confidence in potential current victims so that they, so that they seek the support and help that they need. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the next question has been submitted by Neil Wilby. Oh, on 8th of March 2022, on the Recusant 9 Facebook page, it was revealed in open space that at least one member of the local Conservative group had leaked documents to the operator of that site. Can the Mayor, the Leader of the Council and the Group Leader of the Conservatives all please assure full council that an appropriate investigation into that admitted leak will take place. Thank you. 
The leader of the Liberal Democrats group will ask his questions. Councillor Sykes, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, my first question tonight is an issue that's already been raised by many people tonight, and they need some reassurance on it. And that is the report into CSE that has been de 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 delayed yet again. And this is after previous delays in January and November this year. I agree it's extremely important to ensure that anyone who is bringing forward evidence must be given the opportunity. And I am glad that people in question now feel confident to bring forward their evidence. However, I feel it's vital for public support in this process to be maintained. And there must be a transparent process for the continued investigation taking place. Even more importantly, there must be clear support for the people who have already given evidence and who have expect, been expecting this report to have been issued twice previously. Could the leader, therefore, please confirm what additional support is being given to those members of the public who have courageously stepped forward to give evidence while this process is delayed again? Whether the oversight board of the investigation has agreed with the extension of this investigation in this way, and if so, why have they not issued a statement that would help reassure the public? Also, are there any strands of the investigation which are unaffected by additional interviews, and whether the report could be released in stages or as an interim report, which would at least allow some of the survivors affected a degree of closure on this stage of their traumatic experiences? In addition to the promised public meeting, is now not the time that a special council meeting also considers the report and that a special dedicated scrutiny panel or committee makes sure it is examined in details and lessons and recommendations are actioned and that this special scrutiny committee and panel should report regularly to full council on progress and on any other matters it sees fit. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Shah to respond. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, and I'd like to thank the Leader of the Opposition for his question. As you said, the CSC is a delay to ensure the victim testimony is heard. We must trust the independent review team to complete their jobs robustly and thoroughly. Um, my understanding is that there is a full um, victim strategy in place working with local and regional organisations, and the publication date and details, uh, Madam Mayor, isn't up to me, it's up to the combined authority um, who are undertaking the review. Um, and we've committed to the public meeting that... Um, priority is to address the needs of the victims and address public concern, Madam Mayor. You set a question to the leader, please, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I am disappointed that Council won't consider the report or we won't have a special scrutiny committee, but I've asked the question and I'll ask it again, um, and I think we'll need to do that uh, to give the public some confidence. Yeah, Councillor Arnott to move and Councillor Sharp to second. Councillor Arnott, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. So you caught me on the hop slightly. Appears that everybody in here knew about this one, apart from probably me. Um, OK, it's not a problem. Um, thank you. OK, Madam Mayor, I don't think that members should be too surprised that we brought this motion. Sooner or later, it was obvious that we would do so. I have a limited amount of time to speak this evening, so I'm going to try and cut through some of the noise, especially on social media, that surrounds this contentious issue that has hung over Oldham and its residents like a dark cloud for years. It is not my intention to promote conspiracy theories, make unfounded accusations or enter the wider debate that takes place outside of this chamber. It is my intention to present our concerns over the review into safeguarding practice in Oldham and what we propose to address those concerns. <clears throat> in November 2019, the Council commissioned a review into historic safeguarding practice in Oldham, specifically to address concerns raised by many members of the public relating to allegations of child sexual exploitation. This report has come to be commonly referred to as the CAC report. In September 2020, the Oldham Conservatives, only four of them at that time, wrote to the leader of the council, then Sean Fielding, expressing their concern that the scope of the review was too narrow and that given a growing number of new allegations, the council should open itself up to the full scrutiny of an independent investigation led by the Home Office. Our motion today 
is not new. We've been here before. Everything that I have seen since convinces me that they were right then and that we are right now. It should be remembered that this is primarily an assurance review. In very basic terms, this review has been commissioned to assure the public there has not been a cover-up by this council, GMP or other agencies. That alone, that very damning point, would surely be sufficient to ensure that the management of this investigation has been exemplary and beyond reproach in every way. Would anybody really say that after nearly two and a half years, the residents of Oldham feel in any way assured or reassured? The publication of this report has been delayed over and over again with various reasons cited, most recently when Andy Burnham failed to deliver on a firm commitment to publish the report in week ending the 28th of January this year, and then only a couple of weeks ago announced that the investigation is now looking at new evidence and there is no new date suggested for its publication. In all that time, has there been an interim report published? Has there been an official update released to detail the process of the investigation? Has anything been done to assure and reassure the public? And make no mistake, the people of Oldham deserve reassurance. The allegations that they've been made and to which this review should seek to address are not minor. They are not related to procedural errors, budget overspends, or somebody getting caught with their hands in the till or their trousers down. These allegations relate to horrible, disgusting, and unbelievably cruel crimes involving the grooming and rape of children in this borough, and to whether those agencies, officers, politicians, and police officers did enough to protect the most vulnerable in our society. The latest delay now looks almost certain to mean that the report will not be published before the local elections in May. This may come as no surprise to many and a disappointment to others. The Conservatives have always been pragmatic in their approach to this report and have consistently been understand... Thank you, much appreciated. The Conservatives have always been pragmatic in their approach to this report and have consistently been understanding and accepting of the many misdates and false dawns that have been a recurring feature of this whole process. But now, regrettably, we feel that the time has come to say that enough is enough. Nobody would wish to see anything other than a thorough, detailed and complete investigation which is victim-focused but this review has failed to deliver with the urgency and expediency that concerned residents demand and deserve. While this review has failed to deliver, conspiracy theories abound, victims and their relatives suffer growing mental anguish, credibility is lost, and a frustrated pub... I'm nearly done. Thank you. And a frustrated public grows more uneasy because their perception is their reality. Now is the time, Madam Mayor, for the Council to show its mettle. Can I, do, can I finish two lines? It's, it's, an import, it's important enough for us to shift the running order. Can I, can I get a couple of lines? Yeah. Now is the time, Madam Mayor, for the Council to show its mettle, to face what is sure to be an uncomfortable reality and open itself to a full independent inquiry headed by and calling on the resources and expertise of the Home Office. Now is the time for the Council to put all other considerations aside and ask the Home Secretary to intervene and bring this review over the line. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Sharp, Councillor Sharp to second, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I rise to second this motion proposed by my colleague, Councillor Dave Arner, and support all that he has said. It is almost three years since the former leader, his cabinet and the entire Labour administration abdicated their responsibility and passed this investigation to Andy Burnham, a total failing of duty. Investigating child exploitation is now our responsibility, not the Mayor of Greater Manchester. Andy Burnham made it clear at the recent public question time in the borough that child sexual exploitation was not a priority for him and Oldham should just deal with it. He suggested it was this council who asked him to sort it out. 
This Conservative group and the Fails with Independence have tried in vain to have CSE investigated at a higher level. And can I just remind you all of Councillor Hoban's words to this chamber over 18 months ago. He said, we cannot go on like this. It is time to stand up. So with that in mind, I ask my fellow councillors in this room, will you be brave enough to stand up tonight and vote for this motion? To attempt to get justice and answers for the victims? Or are you going to vote to kick this into the long grass once again? It was International Women's Day last week, and we saw some very warm, we sorry, very warm words from the leader of the council, celebrating women across the borough and beyond. However, would it not have been better if Councillor Shah had stood up and admitted that this report was going to be delayed and admitted that this council was failing the victims and that as a female leader of Oldham Council, Councillor Shah would ensure change would happen and take this failure straight to the government. Some of the victims affected are children and teenagers who probably feel abandoned by this council. And if you vote this motion down tonight, you will send a very strong message to them that yes, you are right, Oldham Council has abandoned them. I ask all of you in this room, parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters, but most importantly to my women colleagues in this chamber, please support this motion and let us get justice for the victims. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, Councillor Lancaster, you've indicated to speak. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to thank my colleagues, uh, Councillors Arnott and Sharp, for bringing this motion forward, and my words of support for it will only be uh, brief. The existence of child sexual exploitation in our borough has understandably been a source of great public distrust in the institutions, local government and policing, which have responsibilities to address that heinous crime. However, that degree of public distrust has only been heightened by the various missed deadlines in publishing this report, and has grown to such an extent that I fear many residents will now never again be able to place their trust in the institutions which are supposed to serve the public interest, and that is a sad and sorry situation. With Mayor Burnham now declining to offer a revised publication date, perhaps he is finally being honest that this process will be more prolonged than initially promised. However, it continues to be a painful process, and this present lack of progress provides no relief to residents of our borough. The resolutions are quite right. Confidence in the Mayor has been lost, national government intervention is required and we ought to establish whether these delays were avoidable and if decisions have been influenced by political and electoral convenience. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Al Hamdani, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, it's quite difficult to speak on this motion and there's a lot in it that I find quite objectionable because it's trying to make political points and I don't think this is something where that should be the case. But I'm also going to say that there are things in this that I agree with and it makes it very difficult. You know, in terms of the way that this investigation is going in, if you read, you know, you're talking about what Andy Burnham is deciding about the dates and if you read the terms of reference it is not him that decides when this is published. It's, it's the independent investigation themselves that do that. And I think Andy Burnham has made repeated mistakes by stating that it will get published on a date. That was never his responsibility, and he's got it wrong in doing that. So it, he is not without blame. I've not spoken to Andy Burnham about this. I, I haven't had the opportunity to ask him questions. People that have, who are independent, independent charities... Have, I have spoken to them and they, and they have reported to me to say that they don't, do not believe that he is trying to delay this uh, and they have spoken on the record about Newsom and Ridgeway uh, and saying that they believe that they should be given the time to carry out the investigations because that is the most important thing that the, this is investigated properly and that actions are carried out. In terms of the actions stated in this motion. The first one is trying to blame Andy Burnham and I, that, that is not what I've been told by people uh, who are independent. So I, I have a problem with that. In terms of whether the Home Office could support the investigation, now you've just talked about it taking over and that is not what the motion says. If the Home Office could provide support, 
to make sure that this investigation happens more quickly, uh, in, in a better fashion, then we should ask them to do that. And for that reason, I think what is in the motion, not what was just said, is accurate. Um, and then to ask whether the delays could have been avoided. Now, it does seem, after the repeated delays, that the process has not either people didn't know what the process was, or they failed to take account of what they had to do, and they have misled people, and people have had to go through the most, they've had to relive the most traumatic experiences of anyone's lives to do this. And then they're having to relive that again and again as it gets delayed and again and again. And so if there were failings, and I'm not saying they are political failings, but if there were failings of any kind, I think it is fair enough that we ask if that, was if that happened. And I really hope that the answer is no. I, and from what I've heard from other people, I believe the answer is no, but I don't know. I've not been in those rooms. I've not been able to ask those questions. So I, I would like to ask that you... It's going to be difficult because of the way the motion is written. You know, it does seek to score points, and I'm sure that you, there are many members of this chamber who do not agree with what, some of what is in this motion. But on the principle of, can we ask the Home Office for any support that would help? I think we should. And on the principle of, yeah, have there been any delays? I think asking that question is fair. And, I, and, and hopefully we can do that, and the answer will be no. And in time, the investigation will come out. And the people that have gone through this will see that what is, been, is being done in their names and for them is hopefully the right thing. If you saw Newsom and Ridgeway's report into Operation Augusta, sorry, thank you, it's traumatic reading, but it, it goes, it tells what the police did wrong. It tells what local government did wrong. It tells of the failings. The people who are doing this report are not people who pull punches, and they are the experts in this. There is no one that the Home Office could put forward who would be better. And I asked the independent invest, uh, investigation into child sex abuse to investigate, and they said no. So it's not like the Home Office has had the opportunity and they have turned it down. So they're not going, I don't expect them to turn around and do it. But if they are prepared to offer any support that they can to this investigation, I am happy to ask them and happy to accept that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will have to go to right to reply now because we did um, agree. Uh, Do you want to speak? The leader put her hand up first. Yep. The leader. Councillor Shaw. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I will start by clearly stating that no elected member should seek to derail or seek political gain from what has always been and remains an independent investigation into historic child sexual exploitation. We all share a desire for the review to publish its report. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. We all share a desire for the review to publish its report so that victims' experiences can be acknowledged and so that we can start to rebuild and restore confidence in the services that current victims rely on. But most importantly, Madam Mayor, we must respect the integrity of the report and its process and trust the independence of the review team, which is Malcolm Newsom and Gary Ridgway. They have told us that this latest delay is due to a need to gather additional testimony from victims whose voices have not yet been fully heard in the review. They are keen to ensure those who have been affected most by this horrific form of abuse are respected and included. And of course, Madam Mayor, we support that decision. It is a disturbing fact that abuse happens, and often in plain sight. It is everyone's responsibility to report concerns and for those in authority to do all they can to protect and support victims and to bring abusers to account. If the investigation concludes that there are failings which need to be addressed, then we must and will accept it without reservation. Only by shining a light on the response by professionals can we fully understand the extent to which victims have the support and justice everyone would demand. What cannot happen, and it needs to be called out, is for elected members in this chamber to undermine that report. 
every political party in this chamber must take responsibility and not seek to deflect or even suppress the report. For those who seek to politically weaponize this sensitive issue, let me be absolutely clear that the review will cover periods during which the council was run under a coalition of conservatives and liberal democrats, and later when it was run just by the liberal democrats. And I will repeat, Madam Mayor, what I said earlier, that child abusers do not abuse based on political control of an area. They do so because they are despicable and evil individuals. I do want these words to be heard by every member in the room and every member of the public watching. Under no circumstances will party politics, political positioning, or deflection derail this investigation. This motion will fall, and it will fall for one reason only, that no one in this room matters more than those that are securing justice for the victims of abuse. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Shah. And um, we'll take one more, uh, Councillor Holbin, please. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I know it's running a bit later than we anticipated, but I, I do feel the need to stand up. It's, um, every, every party that stood up in this debate up to now has railed against the other parties about using it as a political football, and then every one of them has used it as a political football. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that. I'm going I'm to cede. I'm going to cede to uh, somebody that probably knows a lot better than any of us, and that's Maggie Oliver with all this, in, this institution. And, and she's, she's accepted the delay this time. It disappoints me, and it's quite, it angers me that it's took this time, these two and a half years, almost three years, to get to this point. And I do believe after the review comes out, we may need that in, independent investigation after all. But I think this, I don't think this, um, this motion put before us is really that bad. Right, I mean, if we, and, and what Sam said, um, even if we take out the reference to Andy Burnham and the confidence that we have in him, the other two parts of the motion, which are really just asking the government to support and make sure the report comes out uh, and asking for an investigation into it, whether there was any delays. I don't think there's anything for anybody in this chamber to vote against them two parts of this motion. And I think doing it does give the wrong idea to people out there because it's not, it's not a hard motion, it's not demanding things, it's just asking that the Home Office look at it and make sure that it's done, to make sure that it's done in the right time and in the right way, and just to backtrack on it and make sure that we haven't been misled. So, Point nothing... of order, Madam Mayor. What? Sorry, um, I think we, we have to be clear about this. Unfortunately, we can't pick and choose which parts of the motion we vote on. We vote on the motion in its entirety. If, obviously, the Fails with Independence wanted to put an amendment forward, they had that opportunity. But, unfortunately, we can't pick and choose. We have to vote on the motion as it stands. I, I don't disagree with that, but sometimes you've got to swallow a bitter pill to get the rest of them through, haven't you? Yeah. Just, just, have, you have you finished now? Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, now, uh, Councillor Arnott, uh, do you wish to reply? Very briefly, Madam Mayor, I'm aware that um, there's still plenty to do. We're rapidly running out of time. Um, all I'll say is, um, I'll make a quick point. Sam, I, I, I usually will enjoy you standing up, and it's, for me, sometimes it's the highlight of, of these council meetings, which can be a little bit dull at times and go on a little bit. Um, this one, I'm afraid, is disappointing. I can't remember the exact wording that you used, and I think it was you found, you found it object, some part of it objectionable. I find it objectionable to be accused of politicising this, using it to score political points, weaponising it. I find that extremely objectionable. I'm very, very surprised to hear that from you. I make the point. I'm not here to make political points. I'm not here to score points on a horrible episode. Um, and I don't care whether, it's, whether this looks at a Labour, a Labour Council, um, a Liberal Dem Democratic Council or a Coalition Council. It means nothing to me. It doesn't matter who it is. Let's get to the bottom of this. Let's bring every little bit of resource we can possibly get. Let's help these people and let's get this over the line in quick time because everybody deserves that. Everybody. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Madam Mayor, can I move a recorded vote, uh, please? Are uh, the five people in agreement with that? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay, again, councillors, indicate for, against, or no vote. Uh, I will give you your full title. I don't want to offend anybody, so it's councillors Ahmed, councillor Akhtar, councillor Alexander, councillor Al Hamandani, for, councillor Ali, against, councillor Alias, councillor Arnott, for, councillor Bashford Marie, against, councillor Bashford Stephen, councillor Birch, councillor Briggs. Councillor Brownridge, Councillor Byrne, Councillor Chatterton, Councillor Shohan, Councillor Curley, Councillor Davis, Councillor Dean, Councillor Gary, against, Councillor Gloucester Chris, Councillor Gloucester Hazel, Councillor Goodwin, against, Councillor Hamlet, four, Councillor Hindle, four, Councillor Hobin. Councillor Hume, Councillor Hussain Aftab, Councillor Iqbal, Councillor Islam, Councillor Jabbar, Councillor Lancaster, four, Councillor Malik, Councillor McLaren, Councillor Moores, Councillor Murphy, Councillor Mushtak, Councillor Fithy and Clint, Councillor Roberts, Councillor Shah, Councillor Sharp. Four. Councillor Sheldon. Four. Councillor Shuttleworth. Against. Councillor Stretton. Okay. Councillor Surgeon. Against. Councillor Sykes. Four. Councillor Taylor. Okay. Councillor Tua. Against. Councillor Wilkinson. Four. Councillor Williamson. Four. Councillor Williams. Okay. Councillor Woodbine. Four. And Councillor Harrison. Okay. Um, the motion is lost. So we go back to the uh, order of business. Um